Hello everyone, back we are with Elegy's Aya, and uh, yeah, let's continue. Last time uh, we uh, we find uh, we have found uh, Aya's place where she lived with her parents, and uh, we got to know that um, her parents died in a fire, like Zax Eldon did. Uh, Zax Eldon. Sex parents did. Oh, sorry, this was the German word coming to my mind. So, yeah. <clears throat> and we met this stranger. Uh, and let's see what he wants to get from us. I'm still wary of this stranger blocking my path, but if he knows something about Aya, I want to hear it. Yeah, uh huh. I remember her. Oh, you do? She was a pretty smart girl. Oh, yeah, yeah, she is really pretty smart. Wasn't she, Mr. Wynn? Who's Mr. Wynn? She certainly was Mr. Kid. Mr. Kid kind of sounds a little bit uh, more silent. <laughs> lower, lower in loudness. Don't know if this is really the right word to, pronounce, to say it. I'm so sorry. I jump at the sound of a new voice and twist around to see that another similarly dressed man is standing behind me. I didn't even hear, hear him approach. My apologies if I startled you. That's, uh, that's okay. Yeah, I guess. It's simply that my associates and I are sympathetic to your problem. My problem? Yeah, what problem, guy? The more these guys loom over me, the more I'm losing track of what in the world I was trying to accomplish before they showed up. Your missing cousin, Aya. Right, right, Aya. They are still standing on either side of me, making me whip my head, my head around to look at whichever one is talking. Meanwhile. My alleged cousin herself is hovering next to me with an expression of extreme unease. Zack? Is it just me or are these guys total weirdos? Yeah, they are. I try to give a subtle nod uh, and eyebrow rise in her direction to show her that I agree. But weirdos or not, they are the first people who have offered to help me since I got to, since I got to this sad old neighborhood. We were, shall we say, acquainted with her. Isn't that so, Mr. Kid? That's right, Mr. Wynn. We were neighbors. I feel like I'd remember if I'd ever met these guys before. I give Aya a slight shrug. There are a lot of things she doesn't remember. Neighbors? Exactly, <coughs> Mr. Kid. Uh-huh. I don't trust you. Neighbors. No. No, don't trust him, Zack. Please. I feel like a ping-pong ball with the way I keep looking back and forth throughout this bizarre change. Perhaps, if you'd like to accompany us, we could provide you with some details. Oh, Zack, run. What kind of details? Why can't you just tell me now? You see, at the moment, we don't have... He pauses and a moment later the other man picks up the end of the sentence for him. The photo albums, Mr. Wynn? The photo albums! Exactly what I was thinking, Mr. Kid. Gosh, if if the if the the voice actor was told uh, be creepy as fuck, yeah, they did a good job. <laughs> they really did a good job. <laughs> you have pictures of Aya from neighborhood events and whatnot. We'd be happy to show them to you uh, if you'd come with us. Mr. Wind is a really bad actor. 
I can't say this strikes me as the kind neighborhood, uh, as the kind of neighborhood where people get together for block parties. And it goes against all the common sense I've ever been taught to follow strange men to a secondary location. But I still feel like it might be worth it if they can really tell me anything that might help Aya. Okay. Well, if you guys really knew Aya... Don't trust them. Maybe this little test will help confirm that they aren't just random eavesdropping opportunists trying to rob me or something. What's her middle name? The men seem to think for a moment and I almost expect their next words to be a frantic justification about how not everyone knows their acquaintances middle names anyway. But then, the tall one's lips curl into their smile. It's Elizabeth, isn't it? Aya Elizabeth Rush. I do believe you're right, Mr. Kid. Holy, what for kind of soulless people are you? He is. Aya gasped in response and the two men look at me expectantly. Don't follow them. But no matter what they might know, there is still something that feels terribly wrong about all of this. Well, can't you, uh, send me the photos, maybe? I'll give you my email address. I take a step backwards away from one of the men just means I stumble straight into his partner. I awkwardly hop to the side only to see them circling me like predators in the jungle. Zack? Aya's voice is tinged with worries, but I'm not sure what I can do. <gasps> well, Mr. Wind, we can't say we didn't try a general approach. Indeed not, Mr. Kid. But I think it's time we change strategy. In an instant, both men leap towards me, arms outstretched as if to grab me and hold me prisoner. Desperate, I do my best to leap out of the way. But I know almost immediately that I've made a mistake, even in an instant before I feel the pain. Zack! My vision swims as searing head spreads through my face. I realize I must have stumbled and hit my head on the pavement. Zack! Oh, did I... did I choose wrong? Help, Zach! I blink rapidly, trying to regain some awareness of my surroundings. But all I can see is a blurry pool of a vivid red spreading out just next to my eyes. That... and the indistinct form of one of my assailants standing over me. A pity, isn't it, Mr. Kid? It sure is. If only he had seen fit to accompany us. At least that's our job done either way. I think I can hear Aya still calling for me, but it's getting harder and harder to hear her. Getting harder and harder to keep my eyes open too. Maybe I just rest. Oh, I... Really? <laughs> Did choose the wrong. Oh, okay, let's try this again. We skip through it right now to the way where we choose, uh, choose and then we follow them. Okay. <coughs> I give them a nod, stealing myself for whatever strangeness might come next. Okay, let's go see those photo albums. Just don't let me die right now. Strange men led me into a nearby apartment building and I struggle to keep up with them as they stride up the stairs. Loading next to me, Aya remains quiet. I wish I could ask her how she feels about following these guys. Is she tempted by the information they might have to? Or is she just scared? Then again, not like they can do anything to her. I might be walking into a trap, but she'll be fine no matter what happens. I notice a couple eye-catching eviction notices on the door of the units we pass before the tall man unlocks one at the end of the hall. After you, Mr. Wind. Did he jiggle? Boy, 
No, no, after you, Mr. Kid. Hold down and break your neck. They each gesture elegantly towards the door frame, and I wait to see how their bizarre pantomime of politeness will end. After <coughs> yes. They both look satisfied with the alternative suggestion, so I sigh and hobble through the door ahead of me. Aya drifts past me and investigate the layout of the apartment. I make a slower and more casual attempt to do the same. The place doesn't look very lifted. There's dust all over what little furniture decorates the bare grey doors. Outside one cloudy window, I catch a glimpse of the ruins of Aya's old home. What a dismal view to have from a living room. Why don't you take a seat, Mr. What did you say your name was? Uh, John Smith. Mr. Smith, please make yourself at home. Getting up all those stairs was pretty hard on my bad leg, so I'm glad he offered. Carefully, I perch on the edge of the kind of burnout couch you might expect to see sitting on the side of the road on garbage day. I'm sure those photo albums are around here somewhere. The tall man rummages through the contents of a bookshelf, sending puffs of dust into the already musty air. Perhaps our guest would like a green tea this way. Excellent suggestion, Mr. Kid. Damn, so creepy. Uh, may I offer you a cup of tea, Mr. Smith? Uh... All I want to do is see whatever pictures they have of Aya and get out of here. But if it's going to take a minute anyway, I guess I might as well accept their hospitality. Sure. Thanks. One moment, then. He disappears into the kitchen, leaving me alone with a compatriot. How long favorite. has it been, anyway, since you last saw your cousin? He speaks without looking at me, still flipping through the pages of albums on the shelf. About six years? Then my mom had a bit of a falling out with my aunt, and we lost touch with that side of the family. I think that's a pretty decent cover story. The man shakes his head sadly. Ugh, so tragic. Gets in the way of their children's happiness. <gasps> yeah. So bad about this. I wonder if I would have ever seen you around back in the day. <laughs> I was friends with Aya's father. You were friends with Mr. With Uncle Yusuf? Well, more like colleagues. We knew each other, but we weren't close. Does colleagues mean they work together? I wonder if I should ask him where they worked or if that would be a dead giveaway that I don't really know much about Aya's family after all. Then again, would you expect the kid to have remembered what his uncle did for a living? Especially if they hadn't seen each other in years? Maybe I should give it a shot after all. But before I can open my mouth to ask Aya, Aya words out through the wall with the frantic expression on her face. Zack, listen to me, but try not to react. Okay. I glance at my host, who still has his back to me and nod my head a tiny bit to show her that I'm paying attention. You have to get out of here. These guys are murderers or something. I saw the one in the kitchen put something suspicious looking in the tea. I can't stop my eyes from going white with shock. But they don't know you now, so maybe you can get out of here before they figure out you're onto them? I got a plan, so stay calm! Ask where the bathroom is. Uh... Can I use your bathroom? My heart is pounding and I'm certain that Mr. Kid will hear the high pitch of fear in my voice. But thankfully his attention remains on the photo albums in front of him. Oh, it's just down the hall. Thanks. I stand up, gripping my cane tightly in one hand, called Sweetie. Don't run. Just walk down the hall like it's no big deal. <laughs> run with a cane. You are funny, Aya. <laughs> this would be good. 
It's a good thing I don't even have a physical ability to run. If I did, I don't think I'd be able to stop myself. I hear the other man's heavy footsteps returning to the living room and pray that he doesn't try to stop me. It takes me what feels like an eternity to get a few steps away around the corner into the rel relatively relative safety of a hallway where they can't see me. Go past the bathroom. At the end of the hall is a doorway to the balcony. You can get out down the fire escape from there. Fire escape, huh? Even as my mind races through potential ways, I might get murdered. The irony almost makes me laugh. I could have used a fire escape back when I had to escape from an actual fire. At least there's one here now. If it's a little late. I pull the balcony door open slowly, hoping that it won't sound noticeably different from the bathroom door to the sketchy guys back in the living room. I let off a breath that I didn't that I didn't realize I was holding once I closed the door behind me, feeling a light breeze on my face. But this isn't over yet. My chest tightens again as I approach the railing of the balcony and look down at the distance on to the street below. I couldn't these creeps live on the main floor. See the fire escape on your left? <coughs> yeah. You can climb over there, right? Feeling a bit shaky, I turn my head to look at what she's talking about. Sure enough, there's a rusted metal stairway that goes down to the side of the building, and one of its landings is right next to the balcony. Swallowing my fear, I stretch towards it to place my cane down on the other side as quietly as possible, and then hoist myself into a sitting position on the side of the balcony railing. The muscles in my arms strain at the effort, and my head swims at the thought of how easy it would be for me to fall. Don't look down! Too late. My heart pounds, and I suddenly find myself gasping for air as my vision goes blurry. You can do it, Zack. Just stretch out your good leg until you can feel the metal of the fire escape. Then you can slide over there easily. I'm barely aware of my surroundings as I summon all of my energy to focus on Aya's voice and listen to her instructions. Then the shock of an impact against metal shoots through my good leg and I realized I've made it. I'm standing on one foot on the landing of the fire escape. Somehow, even in the middle of absolute panic, I had the instinct to keep my bad leg off the ground. Woohoo! You did it! You're amazing, Zack! Aya cheers loudly and for a moment I worry that those men will hear her. Then I remember that I'm the only one who can. Still, the sound of my landing on the fire escape was a little loud and who knows how well insul insulated this rundown building is. Not to mention how long I've been out here when I claimed I, climbed I was just going to the bathroom. They could start looking for me any minute. I grab my cane and shuffle down the couple flights of metal stairs as quickly as I can, then crutch down and slide out a ladder that completes the distance on the crowd. With no more time to worry about how much noise I'm making, I chuck my cane onto the ground before scrambling down to follow it. It's a relief to finally be standing on solid ground, but I still don't have time to celebrate. What do we do now? I speak out loud to Aya for the first time since this daring escape began and find that my voice is hoarse and shaky. Floating down the ladder behind me, Aya points to the dirt backyard of the next building. Let's head that way. I know exactly where to hide. Okay. Where is she leading us? It doesn't take me long to realize where Aya is leading me. After hopping through a few backyards and tumbling clumsily over a fence, I see the remains of my friend's old home looming ahead. <coughs> she glides directly toward it uh, with more purpose than I'm used to seeing from her chaotic floating movements. The basement stairwell should be here. Cautiously, I step up onto what's left of the foundation and duck under a synced rafter beam to reach her side. 
Concrete steps stretch out into a dark abyss below. No one's going to look for us down there. Tell me about it. I wouldn't want to go down there either if I didn't have to. Despite feeling like I've stumbled onto the set of a horror movie, I take a few steps down the stairs and sit down in the gloom where my head won't be visible from above. Aya curls up next to me, the soft glow of her ghostly form making it a bit easier to see the contours of the unfinished basement room below. We can hide out for a while and then... She pauses. Then what? <laughs> I don't know actually. That's as far as my plan went. She gives a sheepish jiggle and I can't help but chuckle along with her. Well, it went as far as getting me out of that creepy apartment. You saved my life, Aya. You really think so? I wonder what their plan was. I shrug. Good question. I guess I don't really know what they would have done. Nothing good, though, that's for sure. Best case scenario, they might have just robbed me and dumped my unconscious body in the street, I guess. But if they wanted to steal my stuff, they could have just threatened me instead of luring me in there and trying to drug me or whatever. Man, it was stupid of me to go with them in the first place. I sigh and bury my face in my hands. I'm such an idiot. No, you aren't. They had killed you if you didn't go. No, you're not. Without looking up, I feel a sudden cool breeze on my shoulder and understand that Aya has reached out to comfort me. I wanted to go too. I didn't want to tell you to go because it was kind of a stupid risk to take, but... They said they knew me. Even if they were lying, I... I wanted to know. Yeah, I feel your girl. I wanted to know who I am. Feel you. I wanted you to know too. Aya chuckles bitterly. It's funny. All the time I was in the hospital, it barely even bothered me that I didn't remember who I was before. I guess it was because the hospital felt like all I had ever known. I had some vague sense that things had been different once before, but it felt like memories from a totally different life, you know? Like it was so far in the past that it didn't matter, you know? Mm -hmm. There was nothing I could do about it. So I lived for every day as they came. And I was happy most of the time. But now that I'm starting to remember, now it's like something's missing. Like it always has been, but I just never realized it was gone before. I want to help you. I look up into the soft glow of Aya's kind eyes. When my parents died, I felt like I had lost everything. I felt like I had died too. But spending time with you, hearing your stories, exploring the hospital, it was what I needed to make me feel like I was really still alive. You helped me so much. So if I can do anything at all for you... Zack, you don't owe me anything. But I want to. I want to do whatever I can to help you remember. To find what's missing and give you back your past. She blushes a bit as she smiles. Thanks, Zack. You know, going around town looking for answers and dealing with those shady guys, it was scary, but it was like a real adventure. Like the kind I always wanted to have. Yeah, it kind of was, wasn't it? <laughs> I find myself laugh laughing out of both amusement and relief. It was really scary, though. I thought those guys were going to get me for sure. But you made it. You escaped. Just like a cool action hero. Me? An action hero? I don't think I've ever seen an action hero wearing one of these moon boot things. I guess you're toward my aching leg. Well, they must sometimes, right? I mean, if you're fighting tons of evil henchmen all the time, and running away from explosions, you're bound to have some injuries. Yeah, but that's what the things we don't see in movies, right? They just don't show you that part in the movies. Yeah, like I said, they don't show this part in the movies. I guess so. Oh, and me? 
Maybe you can turn your injuries into an advantage somehow. Like using your cane as a special weapon. If we see those guys again, you can whack them on the heads with it. I like the sound of that. I smile at the image my friend has conjured into my mind. Me, fending off hordes of villainous martial artists as she shouts out advice and encouragement. But it only takes a moment for that fleeting happiness to fade. Aya, those guys knew who you were. They knew your full name. Do you have any idea why that was? She shakes her head. I've been thinking about it, but I'm still not sure. I really don't remember them at all. But maybe they really did know me or my parents in the past. Or maybe they just coincidentally overheard a lost looking kid asking questions about me. And thought it was a good opportunity to, to do whatever creepy stuff they were trying to do. But what about that girl, Madison? She seemed to think you didn't die in the fire. And the way her stepmom told me to stop asking questions. I reflect on the urgency with which she turned me away from the from her door. She sounded scared. Like she was worried something bad would happen if I didn't. Aya. I search her eyes for an indication of how she feels about my developing theory. What if you were murdered? What if those guys killed you and Madison saw something and so they threatened her family into silence? Aya's spectral form gets a little bit hazy for a moment, as if she's shivering. Hi. Zack? I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that. I could be wrong. It must be a terrible feeling to consider the idea that you could have experienced something so traumatizing without remembering it. No, it's okay. My friend regains a bit of her composure. You could be right, too. <coughs> and even if it's hard, I still want to find out the truth. Do you think we should talk to the cops or something? Maybe even that detective? I mean, those guys were clearly criminals. And if there might be something even bigger going on... Aya gives a forceful shake of her head. What would you say to them? We don't have any evidence of what happened. Just a story they may not believe about how some strangers creeped you out. And how would you explain anything about me? I sigh. Yeah, I guess you're right. No one would believe me. That detective seems suspicious of me already. Maybe she'd just think I was up to no good somehow. Even if the cops investigated, they probably wouldn't arrest those creeps. And then, if they knew we said something, they might come after us. I say us, but I guess I really mean. There's not much those guys could do to Aya. Yeah, who knows what other criminals they might be in touch with. Maybe they'd be able to find out where we live. Plus, then my Aunt Claire would know I was lying through my teeth about my best buddy Ivan. Aya loves. <laughs> I forgot all about Ivan. Poor guy must be wondering where you are. I chuckle a bit too. She'd probably never let me go out on my own again if she knew how narrowly I escaped getting murdered. And then you and I wouldn't be able to keep looking for answers. You really want to keep trying? Even after what happened? Of course. I'm not sure what we should do next, but I'll figure it out. Like I said, I want to help you. We're going to figure out what happened to you, no matter what. Aya grins. Yeah, and solve the mystery. Detective Zack, back on the case. With Assistant Aya for backup. I wish I could conclude that little exchange with a high five, but I don't know if pretending to slap my hand against her in corporal one would be quite the same. What do you think? Have we been hiding out for long enough for those guys to stop looking? Maybe we should head back to the bus stop. I can check my phone and find a different one a little farther away, just in case they're still in the area where we started. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. 
Aya unfurls her ghostly body and floats back up to the top of the concrete stairwell, a smile on her face. She reaches out as if to help me back up. And as impossible as that would really be, I appreciate the gesture. Let's go home. And there, my guys. There, my guys, we stop this event. We were really close on dying. <laughs> um, yeah, let's see if, if we can get behind Aya's uh, past. I'm really curious right now, because who are these guys? And why did they want to kill Zack? Yeah, I hope you are as curious as I am. Uh, let me know in the comments and if you are here and new to the channel, please let uh, left a like and subscribe so we can grow even more and I can make even more English uh, Let's Plays. So until then, my friends, bye bye.